Uh, so gold closely follows uh, uh, two things. One is the growth of broad money supply, but it can deviate around that trend very significantly based on real interest rates. The risk uh, to reward ratio is somewhat improving in gold's favor for investors that don't mind the volatility. In addition, if you look at you know where gold is, and if you look at say the free cash flow that's being generated by gold miners, you know a lot of them are doing great at current gold prices. And so gold's kind of in a mixed condition because it, you know the gold really kind of focuses more on that long end. You know, back in, say, late 2018, when I started to get interested in commodities, I focused mainly on the gold space. Uh, but then as, you know, gold outperformed a lot of those other base commodities as you went into 2020, uh, that's when I started to get interested in these other spaces, you know, moreover. So I had some copper and gold. I, mean, I had some copper and oil exposure going into that. Uh, you know, the copper did pretty well. The oil, that that's, you know, got hit pretty hard there. But then I started rotating a little bit more into those those types of assets. And so I like diversified uh, commodity producers. I also like gold, silver. I've, I've liked copper. I've actually trimmed back my copper a little bit just because it, it did so well. But I'm still bullish with a long term view on, on most copper producers. Uh, so gold closely follows uh, uh, two things. One is the growth of broad money supply. Uh, especially on a, if you if you adjust it for either gold's rise in, in market capitalization, meaning that there's a little bit of uh, kind of annual inflation from mining, uh, and so over time it follows broad money supply pretty closely, but it can deviate around that trend very significantly based on real interest rates. Uh, and what I mean by real interest rates is, for example, the 10-year sovereign bond of your country. Uh, it's I often use the 10-year Treasury because you know dollars global reserve currency. Uh, you know, uh, so 10-year uh, Treasury minus uh, the, the U.S. inflation rate, or or minus the uh, the tips market expectations of forward inflation, uh, and that gives us a real interest rate. And, and so people often think that gold is a hedge versus inflation, uh, which is only partially true. So, for example, if you're in an environment where inflation is four uh, percent, but Treasuries are giving you seven percent a year, well, then you have, you have a three percent positive real yield, uh, and so you're actually doing pretty well with your Treasuries. You you're, you're, you don't mind holding that as a store of value. And the opportunity cost of holding gold, which is a yieldless asset, is pretty high in that environment. And so you generally don't see uh, gold do very well in that positive real yield environment. Uh, and so I, I kind of have that that broad approach right now, uh, focused generally on, on, on mid caps and larger caps. Uh, and I generally leave the, the smaller uh, companies and exploration companies to, to, to kind of niche experts that, that know, you know those fields better than I do. However, if you had inflation of say 2%, uh, but treasuries are yielding 1%, well, now you have negative 1% of real yields. And suddenly that, that scarce, yieldless asset of gold uh, suddenly has no opportunity cost, and if anything, has a, has a positive carry. Uh, and so suddenly gold is a lot more attractive. And so really what it is, is it's a hedge against negative real yields. Uh, and it, it basically protects you from that currency devaluation that occurs uh, in periods of, of negative real yields. So gold trickier because you know it's it's obviously we don't not, we don't know the exact amount of gold that exists in the world, uh, but that you know for example the World Gold Council has public estimates for how much gold uh, has been mined and is still available uh, because you know virtually all gold uh, that is mined stays in circulation because that's one of the traits of gold is that it's, it's you know infinitely reusable. Small amounts of it get get thrown out in electronics and things like that, but uh, the majority of it's still around. And so if you go by their estimate based on, you know, and multiply that by the price of gold per ounce, uh, that's where you, you get, you know, a range of, of maybe 10 to 12 trillion uh, in market capitalization. But then if you say segment that and say, okay, what is the percentage that consists of private investment? Uh, well, that's only, you know, it's several trillion. It, it's much less than 10 trillion. Uh, and so in that context, that's still a very small percentage of net worth. And so that's actually one of the reasons why when people say, you know, Bitcoin is going to displace gold, I point out that in the grand scheme of things, you know, we have a there's, there's more than uh, 500 trillion dollars in assets worldwide, uh, and so both of them are actually you know very small ponds in the ocean of assets. So if it's more like you know I, I compare those to the size of the global bond market rather than you know get concerned about which one's going to take market share from the other. And so even if you look back in the 1970s where gold did very very well, it did very well in two really big spikes. I mean there was like the the, the big run up to the mid 70s which is when you had negative real rates go down to like negative 5%. Uh, and then it, it cooled off a little bit. Gold gold took a breather. It had a big correction. Uh, real interest rates came up a little bit, but then you, but then they fell again. 
in the late 70s into 1980, and that's when gold had its big blow off top. Uh, and so even in environments where gold does well, it tends to do well in line with what, what real interest rates are doing. And by August of 2020, we were at negative 1%. Uh, and so gold did very well during that, that uh, we call it two year period. Uh, but then we started to see nominal yields come back up from, from record low levels. Uh, and so they actually went up faster than inflation. And so we saw gold take a, you know, a correction. It's been like an eight month correction. And now we're starting to see, however, that inflation's catching up to nominal uh, yields. And so we're seeing that gold's kind of getting a little bit of a, a floor here. It's bouncing a little bit. We'll see how persistent it is. Uh, but ultimately what it's, what it's doing is it, it's kind of, you know, inversely following real interest rates. We've also seen gold kind of showing some signs of, you know, not, not really, um, you know, rising, but it's it's been somewhat consolidating after a correction. So the so that you know basically we're, we're, we seem to be having less capital flowing out of gold, and and then we see some stabilization there. I, I think around the margins, uh, you know, it's still a little bit of the narrative. Uh, but if you look at you know if I just looked at what gold if I, if Bitcoin didn't exist, and I'm just looking at what gold is doing compared to 10-year yields, nothing yeah. stands out as unusual. Now it might be on the weaker side, slightly of what I'd expect. You know, maybe it's 100 100 bucks lower than I think it should be. Uh, but overall, you know, it, it's roughly following what I would expect from money supply growth uh, and from those 10-year real yields. You know, it's possible that Bitcoin is responsible for the fact that it's on the weaker side of what I'd expect rather than you know, say on the stronger side or kind of average. Uh, but overall, it's not really doing anything enough that I would call it deviant uh, from how I'd expect gold behaving in this 10-year uh, environment. Now, overall, real yields rose a little bit quicker than I would have guessed, say, six months ago. And so gold's been slightly weaker than I would have guessed six months ago. But comparing those two measures together, it's making sense as gold relative to real yields. Yeah, since our previous conversation, we still see gold closely tracking real interest rates. Uh, and that's part of the reason why gold was able to find, you know, maybe not the bottom, could be, but at least a local bottom in the sense that, you know, 10-year uh, uh, yields stopped going up rapidly. They, they started, you know, they consolidated, they went back down a little bit at a time when inflation expectations were still strong. And so real yields, uh, you know, uh, decreased again. Uh, they haven't gone da back down to where they were in August 2020, uh, but they, they've eased and that has allowed gold to bounce. Now, so, but because we're getting such strong action in Bitcoin, and because younger investors are generally using, uh, you know, Bitcoin more like that gold proxy, uh, you know, we are probably getting some money flows that would have otherwise gone into gold and silver instead directed towards Bitcoin. But I, I view it as a big mix. So some people are, are, you know, only one camp, only the other camp. Whereas I like Bitcoin, I like gold, I like silver, I like copper, I like uranium. Uh, and I kind of just tilt them based on, you know, what's what's getting out of hand. Uh, and so basically, as we look forward, like we mentioned, we have these base effects coming up. And so, uh, you know, some of these headline CPI numbers, you know, could be pretty surprising. Uh, and so and, and 10 year treasury yields, it's a, it's a very large market. It's unable to move as quickly, uh, even though, as we saw in, in, say, months ago, it can, it can actually move pretty quickly. Uh, but, you know, compared to what these base effects are going to be like in, in later this spring, uh, you know, it, it's quite possible that you get even even further down negative yields. Uh, and so that that's kind of the, the, the big challenge with, with gold investors is that they have to forecast both inflation uh, and they have to forecast bond yields. And so overall, I think, you know, the, 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 the risk uh, to reward ratio is somewhat improving in gold's favor for investors that don't mind the volatility. In addition, if you look at, you know, where gold is, and if you look at, say, the free cash flow that's being generated by gold miners, you know, a lot of them are doing great at current gold prices. Uh, not really. It's been, I guess, a slightly weaker than I would have expected. But overall, it's it's pretty much doing what I'd expect uh, from the 10 year doing what it's doing. And so a lot of people focus on the shorter end of the curve. But because gold is generally a longer duration asset, it, it, it's best to compare it to other long duration assets, such as the 10 year treasury or, or longer. And so if you look at uh, the real rate in the 10 year, you know, the, ever since August of 2020, we've had nominal rates rising faster than inflation expectations. And so you've had a, a rising of real yields that are still negative, uh, but less negative than they were at their bottom in August 2020. And so even even though if you look at, say, earlier in the curve, like the five year, uh, you're getting kind of a, a, a wider, uh, you know, kind of a more negative rates. If you look further out at the 10 year, that's where you're kind of getting some solidity there. You know, unlike, say, the 2011 spike in gold, you know, they're controlling expenses. Energy prices are still pretty low. They're not plowing money into, say, you know, bad capex or bad acquisition projects. 
ah and so a lot of that money is going right to their bottom line and then they're they're strengthening their balance sheets, they're they're paying dividends and so overall the gold mining industry is in a pretty healthy space ah space even at current gold prices, let alone if gold were to but you know kind of rise from here so that's that's kind of the space that i'm watching that overall that's you know it's it's a pretty healthy market in my view at the current time and there are ways to hedge it now i do think that as we go forward a little bit uh, we'll get you know inflation expectations probably catching up to that and you might have seen kind of a, a rollover where, where gold kind of finds a bottom drill rates find a top uh we have to see a little bit you know more conviction on that right now it's kind of a potential turning point that i'm kind of monitoring that we might we might see a little bit of a decoupling here and gold kind of find its legs a little bit uh but kind of the the ultimate long-term thing is the potential for yield curve control or things like that but the fed's unlikely to move on that until things get disorderly enough to that the market's essentially demanding it until then uh they're basically keeping the the short end tight they're letting the long end rise and so gold's kind of in a mixed condition because it, you know the gold really kind of focuses more on that long end Uh, so gold closely follows uh, uh, two things. One is the growth of broad money supply. And so really what it is, is it's a hedge against negative real yields. Uh, and it, it basically protects you from that currency devaluation that occurs uh, in periods of, of negative real yields. The big challenge with, with gold investors is that they have to forecast both inflation uh, and they have to forecast bond yields. Gold is generally a longer duration asset. It, it, it's best to compare it to other long duration assets such as the 10 year treasury or or longer gold mining industry is in a pretty healthy space uh, space even at current gold prices let alone if gold were were to you know kind of rise from here 